Hello students. Now today will be lecture number 10. But in lecture number 9, we have gone through the definition part of principal planes as well as principal stresses and the methods which we can use to analyze the principal stresses and to find the or to locate the position of the principal plane and two methods we have discussed that is analytical method as well as graphical method and analytical method we have started that mean we will be formulating some formulas and from that formulas by putting the available data we can just locate the position or inclination of the plane which is principal plane and the principal plane was defined as the planes in a member or in a structure which is subjected to direct stresses or other type of stresses and that planes which are mutually perpendicular planes but the plane on which shear stress is zero that means no shear stress will be there on the plane and only normal stresses will be there and those normal stresses on the principal plane are called as principal stresses now let us continue this lecture number 10 where we will be going through in the continuation of the principal stresses and principal planes and using analytical method now let us go through the principal stresses and what are the stresses which we call as principal stresses for that we have to first of all locate the principal planes now we have to find out the stresses on an oblique section of a body which is subjected to simple shear stress that means the case when there will not be any application of direct stresses and only simple shear stresses acting on the body now let us try to understand and try to evaluate with the analytical method what are the stresses acting on a plane which is having an angle of inclination so that means stresses on an oblique section which is subjected to a simple shear stress that means if there is a body which is subjected to only simple shear stress not any other type of direct stresses so what will be the stresses on a plane which is having an angle of inclination theta with the x-axis and for numerical purpose we will be considering the horizontal axis as x-x axis now let us consider tau xy is the shear stress which is acting in clockwise direction so we will be taking it as positive shear stress acting along x-x axis as we can see in the figure now we have to go through this figure this is a body rectangular type of body or any section of the body now you can see here tau xy is acting in a vertical direction that is along the x-x axis so now tau xy will be forming a couple and this tau xy shear stress because it has the possibility to rotate the body in clockwise direction so we will be taking this tau xy as positive value of shear stress now what we have to find out we have to find out the stresses developed due to this shear stress tau xy on this plane ab which is having an angle of inclination of theta with the horizontal direction or we can say along x x direction which we consider as a horizontal direction now this will be the wedge which will be under consideration so that we can take the free body diagram of this wedge abc to evaluate 
what type of stresses are acting on this oblique plane having angle of inclination theta so abc is the wedge which we have taken as a free body diagram now to keep this abc wedge in equilibrium what will happen when we apply this tau xy in clockwise direction then ultimately as per the theory of the equilibrium another couple of this shear stress that mean tau xy will act along the anti clockwise direction that is it will act along y y axis now let us see this figure carefully this is wedge abc and ab is the plane under consideration on which we have to find out the effect of this shear stress which is acting on the body that means this is a simple shear stress and what we have to find out we have to find out stresses on this oblique plane now tau xy is acting vertically along face ac and tau xy another which is contracting it will be acting in the horizontal direction along the face bc now sigma n will be the stress in the normal direction to the plane ab and tau will be the shear stress which will be getting developed due to this tau xy in a direction parallel to the direction of plane ab now first of all let us calculate the force along y axis acting on this face ac so this will be considered let it is p1 and this p1 will be equal to shear stress which is acting on face ac into area of the face ac and in earlier discussion we have considered that thickness of this body is considered as unity so tau xy when we multiply with size ac into 1 that is unit then it will be giving the value of p1 which is acting in vertical direction and similarly p2 will be acting along the side bc in horizontal direction so p2 will be the force which is acting on face bc in the horizontal direction it is given by p2 is equal to tau xy multiplied by area of bc that is bc length of bc into unity now we have to resolve these two forces p1 is acting in this direction and p2 is acting in this direction so we have to take the resolution of these two forces in a direction which is normal to the plane ab as well as along the plane ab so resolving p1 and p2 into direction normal and parallel to the plane ab now from the theory by the resolution of these forces what we can conclude that pn is coming out to be equal to p1 cos theta plus p2 sin theta and by putting the value of p1 and p2 in this equation ultimately we will be getting this equation a now pn is equal to tau xy into ac into cos of theta plus tau xy bc sin theta so this equation a will give us the value of the force which is acting in a direction normal to the plane ab and that is because of these tau xy shear simple shear stress which is acting on the face of the body similarly along the direction which is tangential to the plane that is ab the end it will give us the value of tau and first of all let us calculate the force acting in a direction which is tangential to the plane under consideration that is ab so pt t for tangential it is equal to p2 sin theta minus p1 cos theta again what we do we put the value of 
P1 and P2 in this equation and we got equation number B. Equation number B will be giving the force which is acting in a direction tangential to the direction of the plane that is AB. So this is PT is equal to tau xy dc sin theta minus tau xy ac cos theta. Now in continuation solving for the normal stress that is we have to calculate what is the normal stress sigma n which we can get from the value of Pn normal force and this normal force divided by area of the plane under consideration and again because thickness is unity so area of side AB will be AB into 1 and when we divide the normal force divided by the area of the plane then it will give us the value of stress sigma n sigma n mean stress in a direction normal to the direction of the plane AB. Now from sigma n from earlier equation which, which we have developed for Pn let us put here now Pn will be equal to tau xy ac cos theta plus tau xy bc sin theta let us divide it by AB and after solving it mathematically what we get we get tau n is equal to tau xy into sine 2 theta so this is the value we which get after solving this equation using the trigonometrically formulas that means ac upon a. we will be putting the value of ac upon ab and the value of cos theta similarly bc upon ab and value of the sin theta <coughs> so after solving it we get sigma n is equal to tau xy into sine of 2 theta similarly when we solve for the tangential stress now tangential stress tau it is given by the ratio of force which is acting on the tangential direction divided by ab then we get the value of tau by this equation and ultimately solving it we got minus tau xy into cos of so we get the value of stress which is acting along the tangential direction that is tau which is called as shear stress and that is given by the formula tau xy into cos of th 2 theta now what we have to do we have to understand what are the principal planes and how to locate the position of the principal plane position of principal plane mean at what angle to the horizontal principal plane will be inclined so as per the definition of the principal plane we know that on principal plane shear stress is equal to zero now here we got the equation minus tau xy into cos 2 theta which is the equation of shear stress so we have to equate this equation equal to zero and after putting this equation equal to zero what we observe that cos 2 theta must be equal to zero so that this equation can be equal to zero now cos 2 theta equal to zero mean when this angle 2 theta is 90 degree and for that theta will become 45 degree as well as theta will become 135 degree because cos of 90 as well as cos of 270 will give us the value equal to 0 now we got the theta value 45 degree as well as 135 degree and as you know we have discussed that in the definition part of principal plane that principal plane are two mutually perpendicular planes so that mean one plane will be acting at an angle of 45 degree that mean location of the one plane will be having an inclination of 45 degree with x-axis and 
another plane which is mutually perpendicular to this plane will be making an angle of 135 degree with the horizontal direction in this type of numerical problem so we can say the principal plane will be to mutually perpendicular plane which make an angle of 45 degree and other will make an angle of 135 degree with the horizontal direction as per this consideration of this type of a derivation which we are going through because if the body is having another type of inclination that mean body is not horizontal then this angle will automatically change so we can consider here from this diagram we can easily understand that this is the body and this body is in the horizontal direction now this is the first plane which is making an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal direction so this will be the principal plane and on this principal plane shear stress will be zero now you can easily put this value theta is equal to 45 in this equation of normal stress and when we put theta 45 here it will become 2 theta will be 90 so sin 90 will be 1 so that means maximum normal stress will be equal to tau xy so shear stress will be 0 and normal stress will be maximum that is equal to tau xy and another plane this second plane is this plane will be making an angle of 90 degree with the first plane so that we can say that these two planes are mutually orthogonal mutually perpendicular having 90 degree and this plane is making an angle of 135 degree with the horizontal direction so this is the way how we can find out the location of the planes that mean angle of inclination of the planes which are principal planes now another case stresses on an oblique section of a body <coughs> which is subjected to direct stress now here we are considering direct stress in one plane as well as simple shear stress is also acting so we can say one direction will be having direct stress and that means body will be subjected to direct stress along one direction it may be along x direction or it may be along y direction and shear stress is also acting so this will be the diagram this is the body and tau xy is the shear simple shear stress acting on the body along the surface of body and sigma x is the direct stress which is normal to this vertical face so this body is subjected to direct stress as well as simple shear stress now this will be the free body diagram of wedge abc now you can see here on this face ac direct stress sigma x is acting and along face ac <coughs> also simple shear stress is acting as well as along face cb also shear stress will be acting again we have to find out sigma n which is the stress in the normal direction to ab as well as tau which is acting in a direction tangential to plane ab so by solving this wedge which we have taken into consideration what we will get we get sigma n equation for sigma n that is a it is sigma x by 2 minus sigma x by 2 into cos 2 theta minus tau x by into sin theta similarly after resolving all the forces as we have done in the previous pro problem we will get tau and formula for tau is equal to now what is tau tau is the shear stress because of tau x y which is simple shear stress as well as sigma x which is the direct stress along one direction 
So we get tau is equal to sigma x by 2 into sine 2 theta minus tau x y into cos 2 theta. So these two equations you can get from the equation which we have already discussed. Now you have to take into consideration sigma x as well as tau x y. That means first of all you have to get the value of force which is due to tau x y and another force which is due to sigma x and ultimately taking or you can say resolving the com all the forces which are acting that is force number one force number two and force number three and resolving all these three forces two direction one is in the normal to the plane ab and other one is in a tangential direction and after solving with the help of trigonometric formulas you will get these two equation equation a and equation b one is equation for normal stress and another is for the shear stress now again question is how to locate principal planes so again same methodology we will be using that principal planes are those planes on which shear stress is zero so that means we will take the help of equation b to find out let the principal plane make an angle theta p let us consider this a b is making angle theta if it is principal plane then this theta will be replaced by theta p p for principal plane <coughs> with the direction of direct stress now when tau is zero that means on the principal plane tau will be zero now equating this equation b equal to 0 so this is equation b sigma x by 2 sin 2 now theta will be replaced by theta p minus tau x by cos 2 theta p equal to 0 so ultimately what we get after solving this equation equal to 0 we get tan 2 theta p is equal to twice tau x by upon sigma x so this will be the equation c now this equation will give us after putting all the values you can get the value of theta p and theta p will give the location of the principal plane so that means at what angle the principal plane exists here so by solving this equation c the direction of principal plane can be determined now we got this theta p in the form of tan 2 theta p is equal to twice tau x y upon sigma x this was equation c earlier we have solved from which we can conclude that this 2 theta p will be positive because tau x y will be positive sigma x will be positive now this can be positive when both the numerator and denominator have the same sign that means either there may be the possibility tau xy is positive as well as sigma x positive otherwise tau xy negative and sigma x will also be negative so this equation from seeing this equation we can make a triangle of stresses denominator the in the equation as already told that both are of either positive sign or negative sign so two cases will arise in first case there will be taking tau xy negative as well as sigma x negative second case will be at some other angle theta p tau xy will be positive as well as sigma x will be positive so in first case what we are considering we are taking numerator negative as well as denominator negative that means this numerator 2 tau xy is negative as well as sigma x is negative so then we will get some angle that is theta p1 now this will be the angle theta p1 where this plane will be principal plane now from the triangle law uh, simple triangle what we get this hypotenuse will be equal to square of this plus square of this of square root so sigma x square plus 
4 tau x y square. Now let us consider case number 2. In case number 2 what we are taking numerator as well as denominator both are taken as positive then there will be another type of angle that will be theta p 2. Now theta p 1 will be giving one principal plane and another angle theta p 2 will be giving us the second principal plane which is mutually perpendicular to the first case. So again we got this triangle, triangle of stresses we can say. Now equation A which we have already seen where sigma n we have calculated. Now equation A can be rewritten by putting sin 2 theta p. Now from this case number 1 we can get sin 2 theta p 1. Sin 2 theta p 1 will be equal to ratio of the perpendicular over hypotenuse. Similarly cos 2 theta p we can get that is base by hypotenuse. So after getting the value of sin 2 theta p 1 as well as sin 2 theta p 2 in this case and similarly cos 2 theta p 1 from this triangle as well as cos 2 theta p 2 from this triangle and putting the values in equation A. We will get let us consider this sigma p1 is the maximum stress and this will be the maximum principal stress and after solving the equation a what we get we get this formula or this equation we get that sigma p1 which is the maximum principal stress is equal to sigma x by 2 and plus square root of sigma x by 2 square plus tau x by 2 square now in second case minimum principal stress that it is sigma p2 and this will be after again in the similar pattern after putting all the values in the equation a we get the value of sigma p2 by this formula so this is the maximum principal stress this will be the minimum principal stress now another case we have to find out stresses on an oblique section of a body which is subject to direct stress in two planes. That means direct stress along x sigma x and sigma y will be acting and shear stress is also acting. So a diagram will be as we have shown here. Now you see here shear stress is acting. Sigma x is one direct stress and sigma y is the another direct stress. That means direct stress along x axis as well as direct stress along y axis as well as shear stress is acting. So free body diagram of this wedge ABC into consideration is shown like this. Again same methodology we have to adopt and we have to resolve the forces in two direction normal as well as tangential direction. So after that we get sigma n that is the normal stress due to all these type of stresses in a, in a normal direction <coughs> sigma n that is equal to sigma x by sigma x plus sigma y by 2 minus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos of 2 theta and minus tau x by sin 2 theta. Similarly we will get the value of tau sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta minus tau x by into cos of 2 theta. Now again we have to find out the location of the principal plane and how to locate the principal plane again we are solving the this particular case similar to previous case that means let us consider theta p is the angle which is the principal plane making with the x direction. So we will be again putting tau is equal to 0 that means equation B will be put equal to 0 and after solving we got tan 2 theta p by is equal to tau 2 tau x y divided by sigma x minus sigma y and again solving in the similar pattern we will get the direction of the principal planes. So tau x y 
that means this uh, shear stress as well as both the direct stresses in that case what we get again on the same pattern that means this tan 2 theta will p will be positive so both will be numerator as well as denominator will be positive or both will be negative so again we will be drawing the stress triangle that means first case we have taken both the values negative and other case we have taken both the value positive in first case angle will be theta p1 and in another case angle will be theta p2 again solving the same pattern equation a we can rewrite as putting the value of sine 2 theta p from this both the triangles what we get maximum principal stress sigma p1 is given by this formula and minimum principal stress will be given by this formula so this was the analytical method of solving a body which is subjected to various type of stresses in first case we have taken only stress is acting in a normal direction but in a single plane another case we have taken shear only single shear then direct stress in one plane and shear stress and in other case we have taken direct stress in two plane and shear stress so in lecture number 11 we will be solving some of the numerical problems with the help of this analytical method which we have solved so these equations we will be utilizing in locating the principal plane finding the principal stresses thank you